On the 5th of July 2022, two things happened in the context of the Indian stock market. One is we're very firmly in a bear market and India's big bull celebrated his 62nd birthday. How's it going? Welcome back to my channel. This is Pradeep, you're watching Vlog of Note. In this video, we're going to be talking about three things that you can learn from India's big bull, Rakesh Junjunwala. Let's get started. So first of all, usual disclaimer here, although we don't talk about specific stocks in this video, I am still not a certified financial planner or a SEBI registered expert. If you want to make your own investments, you should do your own market research. Now, Rakesh Junjunwala, who is he? It's very difficult for anyone in India not to know Rakesh Junjunwala. He is one of the 50 richest men in this country. He is the son of an income tax officer. You should always ask them how to make money. He started in 1985 with just rupees 5,000 and today he is worth over $5 billion or over 30,000 crores Indian rupees. He has a fairly concentrated portfolio of about 30 stocks. Largest among them include companies like Titan, Nazara Technologies, Star Health and Metro Brands. Now, there are three things that you and I can learn from Rakesh Chunjunwala. The first is this. You don't have to attend every party. Now, Rakesh Chunjunwala is very famously anti-Bitcoin. Last year in February of 2021, apparently he said he wouldn't buy Bitcoin even if it was just $5. This year, Warren Buffett said something similar when he said that he wouldn't buy the world's Bitcoin or cryptocurrency even if he was able to get it for $25. So yeah, Rakesh Junjunwala doesn't want to go to the cryptocurrency party. He also doesn't want to invest in new age tech companies. In the last couple of years, we've had a few companies that became public in India, Zomato, which are not profitable. Junjunwala doesn't want to invest in these companies. He'd rather invest in banks and metals, companies that actually make money. Warren Buffett said something similar when he talked about the strike zone. Apparently, Ted Williams in his book, The Science of Hitting, said that you don't have to swing at every ball. You just have to swing at the balls in your strike zone to hit it out of the park. The second thing that you can learn from Rakesh Junjunwala is that you should prepare for losses. Now, this might seem contrary to what you might believe because most people enter the stock market to make money, but you should be prepared for losses. Warren Buffett basically said that rule number one of investing is never lose money. Rule number two is always remember rule number one. However, it's also true that Warren Buffett has called himself an idiot sometimes and that he has lost money. Rakesh Junjunwala has also lost money. He has lost over 8,300 crores in FY23 Q1 alone. That is to say he hasn't actually lost the money, but basically his investments declined by over 25%. It can be hard to invest in the stock market because you do have the opportunity for outsized gains. You also have the opportunity for outsized losses. A stock that you might have invested in could have gone down by over 80%. That's why Peter Lynch says that the most important organ for the stock market is the stomach and not the brain. If you can prepare mentally for losses, then your stomach shouldn't do too bad when you lose all of your money. The third thing that you and I can learn from Rakesh Junjunwala is that in order to succeed, you must be obsessive. Now, this is controversial advice because most people don't want to be obsessive because they find the wrong things to obsess about. However, Rakesh Junjunwala says that if you want to be a successful investor and trader, you must be obsessive. Now, it's important to note here that you shouldn't obsess about Mr. Market. Mr. Market is a creation of Benjamin Graham when he talks about a manic depressive person who's always in the market shouting about buying and selling. He's either extremely optimistic or extremely pessimistic. You should forget about him and obsess about the fundamentals of a company. Another great example of this is Elon Musk. Whether you love him or hate him, you can't deny that he's wildly successful. He was worth over $200 billion and apparently he works 120 hours every single week. Now, most of us work about 40 to 50 hours, so this is three times as much. How is he able to do this? It's not because he's a robot, it's because he has fun while he's doing it. If you don't find what you do fun, you will not be able to obsess about it and therefore you will not be successful at it. 
Warren Buffett himself apparently spends 80% of his day reading financial statements and disclosures. It might seem exceedingly boring to you and I, but that's the reason he's successful because he obsesses. There you have it, three things that you and I can learn from Rakesh Junjunwala. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section down below. As always, please go over to YouTube, subscribe to the Blog of Note channel, ring that notification bell so that you never miss a video and I will see you guys in the next episode.